This new Bouge RV716 watt hour solar generator power station, whatever you want to call it. Don't get hung up on the terms. It has been pretty cool. I've been testing this for a few weeks now and I've actually been pretty surprised by it. The biggest thing that I like about it is that it uses lithium iron phosphate batteries or life PO4. And so it's got over 3000 cycles uh, rated to it, which is pretty amazing. But now that I've done my testing before doing this video, I want to show you what it's capable of doing so that way you know if this is something that'll work for you. I've really been surprised by this unit. I like it, but there may be a caveat for it. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. This is going to be a pretty fun video on this full review of the Bouge RV 716 watt hour solar generator. So I only put the box here just so you can see the specs, but I'll put the specs up over here on the side. And I wanna see how this compares to very similar units like the EcoFlow River Max, as well as the slightly smaller Jackery 500. The EcoFlow River Max is also a little bit smaller. And I've done videos on both of these, so if you haven't seen those videos, you may wanna go check them out. But this is bigger than both of those and has a few different features that really make this the winner in my opinion. So of course, it's got the wall charger, it's big fatty plug here, comes with a car charger, comes with a USB-C to USB-C cable for fast charging. And then of course, we got our solar panel connector here. And this is one of the issues that I'm finding, but we'll address that here in a second. Comes with the user manual, very simple, nothing special at all. But just like normal, the biggest thing I wanna do first off is get this through a power test. I want to see how much power this can output for how long. It's a 700 watt pure sine wave inverter and has 716 watt hours of life PO4 or lithium iron phosphate batteries. The life PO4 lasts much longer than lithium NMC but is generally much heavier. So these units here use lithium NMC and so they have less cycles but they are lighter. And this is 3000 cycles. So just for that alone it may be worth considering. However, Cycles are one of the biggest things that people focus on that really don't matter that much in my opinion. Think about it. If this has 800 cycles, how long is it going to take for you to use 800 cycles before the battery reaches 80% efficiency? You'd have to use it every day for nearly three years, draining it all the way down in order to reach that point. So really, do the life cycles matter that much? Yes, they do matter. However, this is going to last nearly 10 years of draining it all the way down and back up to reach that 80% efficiency. And honestly, I don't think I'm gonna do that many cycles on it. I don't overland that much, I don't camp that much. Unless you're living in a van and you need a little bit of power like this, this might be a little small for a van, but it could be just right, depending if it's just a solo van or if it's a two person van, whatever it is. But it is impressive to me that this does have 200 watts of solar input. The EcoFlow River Max was the only other similar size unit that had a larger solar input. All the Jackery and other similar units only have 100 watts. So I think Bouge RV is looking at the market and saying, what do people want? And people want faster charge time. So I think they're trying to supply that, but let's go ahead and get into the power output testing and then we'll do some charging so that you can see how this really performs in real world. So one thing that I do not like is the screen will not stay on. For crying out loud, companies leave the screen on. We want to see it. At minimum, have a button over here as an on and off switch where it stays on consistently. We want to be able to see it. If you're a company listening to solar generator stuff, leave the screen on. That is one of the number one complaints I see from people. They want the screen on. Okay, rant over, turn the screen on. Come on. So we got our watt meter here. We're gonna see how much it's pulling here. How much it's pulling here. I've got 700 watts of draw put on. Let's see how this goes. So officially, it ran for 44 minutes and 39 seconds, call it 45 minutes. That's exactly on par with what I expected it to do. This was discharging at what's called a 1C rate. Basically, that means it's a 700 watt hour battery effectively, and we were discharging it at 700 watts. So it's called a 1C rate. If we had been discharging it at 350 watts, it would have been a one half of a C rate, just for some uh, scientific clarification there. So that means it was about 75% efficient doing a load like this. You'll get better efficiency when you're not doing such a heavy load. I wouldn't even classify it as warm. Like it's barely room temperature, this whole thing. Every piece of it is pretty much still cool to the touch. That is quite impressive and the fans were never loud the whole time. It's definitely very quiet, 
not annoying at all. Very impressive. Plug that in. We've got a low battery signal here. That just disappeared and it's going. So it's charging just above 180 watts right now. So it's gonna take three, four hours to charge up basically. So what I wanna see now is while this is charging at about 180 watts, can I put a lesser load on it and have it charge up? So let's go ahead and put this on here. I can see the light turn on and we are now actually drawing out 74 watts while putting in 187. Pretty awesome simultaneous charging capability is something that I really like and most people are looking for. Now, before I let this get charged up too much with just the wall charger, I actually have some solar panels outside. I got 200 watts of panels that are ready to charge this up. However, it's not a perfectly clear sunny day. So we're gonna see the best that we can do. I've got two of the powered portable solar rigid 100 panels that are connected, ready to go. Those have been the panels that I have found that are the best output. And you can also find them at poweredportablesolar.com as well as this type of equipment. And in addition to all that equipment, reviews and write-ups, but you've got the video right here as well. So for this, I'm going to need this MC4 splitter because I need to connect the panels in parallel. Parallel means it's got its own dedicated line from each panel that then goes into the single wire for the wires that are gonna go here into this. Let's go ahead and get this uh, linked up outside with those panels. Okay, I'm outside right now. It's really not a good comparison. There's some pretty dark clouds. I'll show you real quick. This is what we're dealing with, but there have been some really clear spots that kind of come through. So this is almost like worst case scenario. I'm gonna show you how it charges when it doesn't have good clouds. And if you haven't seen my video where I put all of these solar panels up on my RV and I converted it to be 100% off-grid or boondock capable, you might wanna go check that out. And so when you subscribe, make sure you click the notification bell because I am gonna be installing this Mr. Cool 9K BTU system in that RV. I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. And something even like this could technically be powered off something like this. So make sure you're paying attention for those videos are going to be fun. But sadly, right now we are getting next to no power from the sun through those thick clouds and that's no fault of it. And so right now I'm only getting 15 watts, which is essentially nothing, but it's barely charging up. So we may have to look at another option. Luckily, it comes with a car charger. Let's check that out. Now the car charger, I'm just gonna use another solar generator. Now you can't use a simultaneous charging as far as having multiple charges going into this, meaning you can't use solar and car or solar and wall, but I wanna be able to see exactly how much power is coming out of the river here and going into the bouge. So plug that in. And here on the river, it says it's outputting 110. It's fluctuating between 106 and 110. And then over here, it says it's getting 100, but I've noticed that as this runs for a minute or so, that the input will vary a little bit. So maybe that'll match here in a second. Charging it this way is gonna take about seven hours. Now the battery on here isn't enough to charge this one because this has a slightly smaller battery, but you get the idea for a car, how much power you're actually gonna get into this. So if you're traveling and you're going a few hours between your destinations, this would actually work pretty well for just plugging it into your cigarette lighter port in your car and charging this up right here. So sadly, I couldn't show you the good solar charging. We've just had bad weather. Actually just over this last weekend, which was a few days ago, I was hunting and that still would had bad weather back then. I was taking this unit with me places to see if I could use it and it did come in hand multiple times. So I do like it. It is very portable. It's really not that heavy. I would guess it's around 25 pounds, maybe a little less. 21, eight ounces. So even lighter than I thought. But overall, I've just been really happy with it. As far as running something like a refrigerator, this may run a fridge for six to eight hours. So I don't look at something like this as an emergency backup for home. This is really just a portable power option. I would definitely not get something this small for home preparedness. As far as the pricing goes, it is very competitively priced. That's another great thing. I'll have links and coupons and everything down below so you can get the best pricing, get it where I got mine. You could possibly say that the inverter efficiency is a little low and 75% at a 1C rate is a little low but it's not uh it's definitely not unheard of one of the biggest things i like about this and it was one of my favorite things about the river max was this has a 100 watt USB-C output. And for some of my footage, I use a drone that uses a 100 watt charging cable. So the EcoFlow River Max was pretty much my go-to when I was out doing filming or just having fun with my drone because I knew I could get a ton of charges into that. And this had a really fast charging output. This one has two. So if I really wanted, because I have a lot of batteries for my drone, I could get another charging station and I can charge all of those batteries really quickly using the two USB-C outputs on here. This isn't something I'm going to use use in a power outage because I have my Titan solar generator for that. The Titan solar generator is capable of pretty much running everything in my house for emergency power. And obviously because the Titan's so big and powerful, this has a 3000 watt inverter and a 
1,000 watt hour battery with just one battery and I can add as many batteries as I want as well as 2,000 watts of solar input. So this is about a quarter of that as far as inverter and battery capacity. So that kind of gives you a gauge on home power versus portable power. This was not designed for home power. As one more quick comparison, this is my old uh, Energy Kodiak. This weighs basically the exact same as this. This is just over 20 pounds. This is just over 21 pounds. This has a 1500 watt inverter, but you can only truly push about 800 watts constantly for an hour or until the battery runs out. And then it's got about 1100 watt hour battery. So this is a much smaller battery in terms of capacity, but it weighs the same. This is lithium NMC. This is life PO4. They weigh about the same. Inverter size, I'd say is technically about the same because you can't push the full 1500 watts constantly off of this. It matches about what this can do as far as nonstop continuous output. This has a 1400 watt peak off of the 700 watt continuous and this has a 1500 watt continuous really 800 watts and a 3000 watt peak but this is how things have changed you know the kodiak used to be the best but cost about twice as much as this did when this was available so technology is coming a long way and i think this would be a very good unit for portable power not backup power for an emergency just portable power. I think Bouge RV is listening to people. They want to probably get into the bigger solar generator game. So we'll see what happens in the future, but I would bet that they come out with a bigger unit as well. So thank you very much for tuning in. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Check out my other videos. I got reviews on all this other stuff. You can see I've got tons of solar generators. I buy pretty much everything out of my own pocket. And so if you do feel like buying anything, please go to poweredportablesolar.com or use the links down below and that does help support the channel. I want to know how you guys would use a system like this of this size. Is it going to be for camping? Is it going to be for emergency backup? I want to know what you guys think. So leave a short comment down below. To all of my subscribers, you're awesome. You're the best. Thank you so much for subscribing. I try to bring you good content, bring everything unbiased. I don't care if you buy this or not. If it works for you, then great. If it doesn't, Great, go with something else or don't get anything at all. As always, go check out the other videos. Be prepared. We'll see you all in the next video.